Hey everyone, this is Osam Wakawayashi from Zen Ideas. Welcome back to CrocBlock channel. In this tutorial, we are going to show you how to speed up a website specific to Jet Engine plugins. So we're going to be covering caching techniques for dynamic content and Jet Engine optimization tips and Jet tabs, Jet tricks, Jet blog, Jet elements, Jet blocks optimization tips. And finally, Jet Smart Filter optimization tips. So let's get started. So let's talk about the caching techniques for dynamic content website. So most Croc Blocks users or Jet Plugin users, they are building dynamic website. So it is important to optimize loading speed in order to reduce TTFB at the time the first byte value. So this can be achieved by loading or executing a certain dynamic content and JavaScript file after the HTML has already been painted. So some scripts are not necessary for rendering page, which is why it's better to use the load script on user interaction option. You can use most caching optimization plugins. So there are several caching plugins out there. So for the caching technique demo, so I will be using this Breeze plugins by Cloudways, but you can achieve these settings uh, with any other plugins, I think. So I've already installed Breeze and go under settings, here's Breeze, okay? So let's go to uh, basic option. So obviously you wanna turn this on, caching cache system. So this purge cache after, so this is the cache lifespan, which is set to one day as a default. So you can increase this number if CPU usage is high, or if you publish contents less frequently. Okay. And then uh, gzip compression uh, enabled uh, the compressed content to reduce the size of HTML, CCS, and JavaScript. And then, so browser cache, um, this is on. And the next one is a uh, lazy load image uh, enabled. So I personally use Cloudflare uh, Enterprise for image optimization because I use um, uh, Cloudways. Um, uh, this is Cloudflare Enterprise because if you are um, Cloudways client, um, it's really inexpensive. So these are price. And uh, just so you know, cross origin safe link, I usually enable this. And this uh, last one here, cache logged in user. So you can enable, but most sites shouldn't need to cache login users. But unless if you're running a membership website uh, or similar to that, and you want to select uh, the members role here. Okay. And the next one is file optimization, uh, HTML minify. I turn this on and the CSS minify enable this. Okay. Now you gotta be careful here. So usually include inline CSS uh, enabled. In my opinion, sometimes um, it breaks your website. So you gotta test it and before you actually implement it. Okay. And the combined CSS, I usually disable uh, this option. Now you can exclude CSS and if you find any problem by minifying the CSS and you can find uh, any code that causes problem and, and you can exclude uh, in this section. Okay. And the next section is uh, JavaScript minified, uh, enable this uh, and include inline JS and I disabled. And the same on CSS, uh, you may find any, some problem and the, you, if you can find any code or causes problem, uh, you can exclude, um, in this section and then delay JS inline script, enable this and next section is preload. So this is enter font or CSS URL. So you can add URL here and the preload links. I would enable this. So when user hover over link, that page will download in the background. So that by the time user actually clicks the link, that page will appear to load instantly. But you have to be careful here. So when you enable this option, uh, it might increase the CPU usage. 
when you have a lot of users. Prefetch of DNS requests. Now this option, if you are using any third-party content load, uh, like if you're using uh, uh, Google Map API, uh, you can add that URL. So the next one is advanced option. So in this option, so you can add any URL. So you want to exclude uh, from the cache. So for example, if you have WooCommerce site, uh, you don't want to cache that the site, right? And then he has a cache query string, uh, disable emoji. Yeah, I usually turn this on because my website, I don't have any emoji. And then uh, honestly, this really doesn't affect so much based on my experience. And a hosting file locally. Uh, I use Google Fonts. So I'm going to just enable this and hit save. So the next one is a uh, heartbeat API. So the default is disabled. That's okay. So, but that means uh, you don't get any real time notification uh, from the plugin or theme. But in my setting, I usually enable this and a heartbeat front end, uh, I'll usually disable because you never need it and the heartbeat post editor. So I'll use every five minutes. It's up to you. So this means uh, your post when you're editing, uh, every five minutes you get auto save. And heartbeat backend, so I usually disable. So you never need it. Okay, and hit save. And then database optimization here. So I, and you can turn this on and then you can clean up uh, everything, but um, uh, make sure if you do this, you have to uh, make a backup. And the next one is uh, CDN, Content Delivery Network. So you need to activate CDN, Content Delivery Network. And I'm not going to go through this in detail because I explained this in my previous, because I use Cloudways, I use Cloudflare uh, for my CDN. Uh, but if you don't have it, uh, bunny.net is also a good one. All right. Uh, next one is varnish cache. So as a default, uh, this is on. Uh, Cloudway says to enable this. And the varnish server. So this is your varnish server IP address, which is added automatically. And then uh, purge varnish cache uh, right here. So purge if you uh, make any design or other changes and you don't see any changes uh, on your website, uh, you can just hit this button. I showed you settings uh, with Breezy, but you can uh, definitely you can check other plugins as well. All right. So next one is uh, specifically I want to talk about Jet Engine optimization tips. First one is don't insert too many listings on the same page because it generates additional server calls and slows down a page. And the next one is don't use lazy load for listing and image located above the fold. It doesn't really make sense and it will visually slow down the page load. So I'll show that to you those two things. All right, so this is my demo page. So I got the publication. So this is CCT, customer content types, listing. Okay, so I got the listing grid here. All right, and then events. So this is a CPT, custom post types. All right, so this again, this is listing grid. Okay, different layout. And I got another one, speakers. Okay, so I got the three listings. Now, if you have to, that's okay. But if you can't avoid it, just try to use one listing per page. All right. And the next one is, now here you see lazy load option here. Now for the top page, so this is above the fold. You don't really need to uh, put the lazy load option here. But the below that, all right, so this must be better performance. This listing, so you should um, enable this lazy road, okay? And then once again, speakers, so this listing too. So I can enable a lazy load here. Okay. So this way, I'm going to refresh here. And then the top part here is above the fold is uh, instantly uh, shows up. And the bottom down here, it's a lazy road. So until user scrolls down, so as you can see, there's a little bit delay here, right? So that's okay. Now, so let's uh, go back. So if you turn lazy load here and hit save, now open up this page and then refresh. So what happened is kind of delay. This kind of frustrates uh, the user. And the number three, 
So try to use custom content types, CCT, instead of custom post type, CPT. The reason is, if you look at the uh, SQL uh, WordPress data table, and when you create custom post types, so all the records goes WP post. As you see, even this is a small website, 156 records. Now, as I said, I have publications here. So this is CCT. So when you create a CCT with JetNG, it creates separate table. So I got only six records. Okay, so it, because it's um, the separate table, it runs faster. So try to use CCT if you can. Now, number four, switch off the module you don't use. And number five, switch off the views you don't use. So you can disable any module you are not using it. So go to a uh, jet engine and uh, here's a module here on the top tab. Here are the modules. Um, and if you're not using it, like from legacy form, um, you know, Greek injection, maybe calendar, I'm using it again. So you can just turn them off and hit save. And the next one is a uh, performance tab. So I'm using Elementor and I'm not using those uh, blocks and bricks. So you can turn this off and then just keep it only you're using and then hit save. And then you can switch on optimize DOM. Now this removes some additional HTML wrappers from jet engine element. Now you have to be careful because it will reset the styling of all dynamic field and dynamic links widget or blocks. Okay. So next one is I want to talk about jet tabs, jet tricks, jet blog, jet elements, and jet blocks optimization tips. So you can switch off widgets and extensions you don't use. Go to Croc block and then uh, jet plugins settings. And you see those uh, jet plugins and then go to widget and extension. And you can switch it off if, if you're not using those things. Uh, let's go to LMS. So they have this widget and extension for each plugins. So right here too. So especially like jet elements. So here as a default, it looks like uh, they are turned on a lot of things. But if you are not using, uh, just to turn them off. Okay. And if you are using Elementor, Croc Block has really nice, unique feature. It's called Load Level 2. So just go to Croc Block, Jet Plugin Settings. You see all the Jet plugins here. And each plugin has called, called General Settings. And then they have it's called Editor Load Level. And you will see Full, Advanced, Medium, Low, and Now, like five levels. This tool allows you to remove unnecessary styling option. So for example, I pick classic accordion widget, and this is advanced setting, and you get almost all the available settings will appear. And if you choose a medium load level, and you see padding settings for container, and some detail settings for text content, as well as margins for inner content and a lot more. And if you select the low load level and the style tab will be uh, really minimal and the most basic setting for background and borders and the basic setting for text content. And if you pick none, so as you see, so there's no styling tab. So it depends on your design approach, but if you don't need all the styling widget or tools, you can always set to like medium to low settings and then you can increase Elementor performance. So last one is I want to talk about Jet Smart Filters optimization tips. Lots of Croc Block users, like including myself, enjoy using Jet Smart Filter. And the one thing is that when you're creating a listing page and if you have lots of dynamic field for each listing items, then it will render really long. So that's one thing. And another thing is using Ajax apply type will work faster because only the listing is changed. While the page reroll type, the whole page will be rendered. All right. 
So this is rather user experience. So if you have a lot of filter items like this, it makes sense to add apply filters button because as users clicking, uh, applying a lot of filter items, feels taking a long time and the user might get frustrated. Allow users to check those box and select any items. And at the end, allow them to uh, click apply filter button. All right, so we covered caching techniques for dynamic content and jet engine optimization tips and other jet plugins optimization tips and jet smart filters optimization tips. That's it for today. Don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful and please subscribe to Crocblog channel for more useful tutorials like this one. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.